we are in the goat barn, and we're getting ready to milk this goat right here. It's been a while since she's been milked, so her teats are kind of full and tight and large, but that won't be hard for the milker, even though our teats are blown out a little bit. Um, we're going to show you how to milk no matter what the teat looks like. First we're going to give her a washing, a little bit of bleach water, clean her up a little bit, help the milk come down. Milking with the electric milker really helps if you have a goat that likes to kick. For some reason they just aren't bothered by it as much as they are hand milking. Alright. Okay. Now because of the way she's built, I like to hold the milker in my lap like this. The tubes are here and um, you can you can do it with your hand. Real easy. Push the button and get the suction going. Slide it the teat cup onto the teat. Both of them. If you have a hard time with it, one thing you can do that's easy is to hold the, the pump between your knees and push the button with your knees and that gives you both of their, your hands here. And you just slide these on as the suction, as the suction comes, um, it just pulls the teeth right in. And if you turn the teeth cut back and forth a little bit, it helps the teeth to fall down right down in. Once you get the milk going and it begins to back up in the teat a cup a little bit, then you quit with the pump because you've got enough pressure. You notice this teat over here is not coming out as fast. That's just the way she's built. So sh this side always empties faster and flows heavier into the milk jar um, than this side does. And this is always the last side to finish also. So you can see that the milk is flowing in at a rate like that. That's about what you want. Um, so I just wait and watch that flow rate. If, um, if it begins to slow down, then I just give it a little bit on the pump and increases the flow rate again. I just keep watching it. just a little bit more. You can also take these and set everything here. Um, I, I don't because of the way her teats are built. It tends to make them, uh, I don't know why, but I tend to usually hold it in my lap, but you can do that too and then you can see the milk flow and do the milk flow. This depends on how your stanchion is built and how your goat is built. You don't want the teat cups to pull at an angle like that because that'll cut off the milk flow and cause air to seep in and it'll give you um, get too much air in it and then it won't come out as fast. So you want the teats to hang at a natural, you want everything to hang at a natural position. almost done. You can tell by how big the size of the bag here. She's probably got a couple more cups in there and then she'll be done. Most of the time when I charge this, I, I plug it in after every use and um, Sometimes I have forgotten to plug it in and I can get two to three milkings off of one charge, although I don't recommend trying it because if you get out here and your pump's not charged up really good, you'll be really frustrated and end up having a hand milk. You can see when I apply pressure on the pump that the milk inside suddenly gets faster 
and the foam increases. If you have a lot of milk coming in and the foam begins to rise, one thing you don't want to do is allow the foam to rise to such a degree that it begins to pull down into this pump and into your pump. If you do that, you'll ruin your pump. Fortunately, these pumps are found at Walmart. If you happen to do that and you suck milk in and you, 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 you milk log your pump and ruin it, just take it back to Walmart, they'll replace it for free most of the time. Looks like she's gonna give us a full half gallon this morning. She's almost done. You got lots of green. Are you getting impatient? All right. All right. So should they get down towards the end? Um, you can keep watching. She still has milk flow out of both teeth. The bag begins to get soft, and so um, when there's no milk flow at all, the teat will it will actually lose suction on its own most of the time, in my experience. And see here, I began to suck a tiny bit of milk into this. It didn't get into there yet. So um, the thing that I do, I didn't come prepared this time. Um, if I think it's going to go over, is to bring a second jar. And I'll show you how to do that. We'll use this water jar just to show you. If you're going to get more milk, like if you're using this for a cow, and you want to, then you would just go ahead and, when this was full, pop it off, switch it out to your second jar, and keep milking. And you're going to lose your suction, and so you've got to start that suction over again by applying pressure to that. Get a lid on my clean milk here, so I don't lose that. All right, so now she's just about done. Her teeth are really soft. Um, but you can go ahead and strip the goat out. Stripping. Hmm? How do you strip it? All right, we had to get the suction going right now. Now, um, what I mean by stripping the goat out is that you want to or the cow, you want to make sure you get all the milk out of the teats. The reason for this is that that will increase your milk, your milk production. You don't want to leave milk in the teats. So as you can see, this side is still full. Like I told you, it's always the last one uh, to finish. This one's already done. There's no more milk coming out of there. But while we're waiting on this one to finish, I just go ahead and apply a little bit of downward pressure on that teat, not enough to pull the teat off or the cup off of the teat, but just pull down and you can see a little bit of milk comes out. You just do that a few times and then see I've actually lost a suction on that teat. That means all of the milk is gone from the teat. I'm still waiting on this half to finish milking. So as you can see, we've got another you know cup and a half even since we switched out from there. So at some point the teat will it will quit. It'll quit and you'll feel it and it'll even make a sound that goes pop and then there's no more and then you go ahead and apply that gentle pressure to strip that side of her bag out getting all, the, all of the last of the milk. All right, now the teats are really soft, the bag is really soft, these come off really easily. If, you, if they don't come off easily, you can kind of tip it sideways, allowing a little bit of air to come in and they fall right off. Once one comes off, of course, the other will come off easily. I always soften the bag, and then I go ahead and continue a hand stripping of whatever might be left inside the which you can see, this is why I don't hand milk this goat, is that she just is pretty aggressive with her feet. But for whatever reason, when I'm using the electric pump, it just gets rid of all of that fuss. I don't have to deal with that. But I do want to make sure that all the milk is gone from her bag before I let her down. I go ahead and milk straight into the tea cup to help keep the milk sanitary. 
that's what's nice about using this system. Once you get these cups onto her teats, everything is completely sanitary. Nothing falls down from her, from the underside of her belly or from her bag as she moves around. Even if she does lift her foot and kick, um, this is all sealed up and sanitary, and so your milk is safe. You don't have to deal with her uh, getting chunks down inside. All right, so that is uh, milking with a goat using our double our double teacup fruit, jar, fruit milker. jar milker. There you go. And we are finished. That was done in real time. So you can clock it and see how long it took. And it really takes all the fuss and hassle out of milking.